Hi everyone, my name is Carrie and welcome back to another video. If you guys don't know me, my name is Carrie. I run Traveling Pony Studios, which is a small little crochet business that I created last year to help pay for my horses. Many, many medical expenses. It is still very, very true to this day, even though a year has passed. Today's video is going to be basically my market overview from my previous market this past weekend. I'm just gonna go over numbers, things that sold, ETC. I will have a vlog coming out at a later date that's gonna have more of like me at the market and the prep leading up to the market. I will say that the week leading up to this market was just an extremely stressful week for me. There was a lot undecided. Luckily, I got it all figured out, but like literally when I was at the market that Sunday, I was still trying to fix the problem when I was at the market, like sending emails. It was just a lot of stuff. <laughs> this is the same market that I actually did the previous month. So last month, and it was at the same location, same host, same hours, all that type stuff. Definitely was in a better mindset this time and just came in with very low expectations of this market, which I do think helped a lot. I will say all things considered, I still did very well. And I think very well considered considering how slow this market was. So some backstory, this was a Sunday market. It runs from 12 to 6. As well, it was extremely hot, I guess you could say, that weekend. I think when we were at the market, we got up to like about 97 degrees, 98. It was really sunny, which was nice considering we've been having some not sunny days recently and a lot of rain. So it was at least sunny. It was just hot where they had the tables and tents and everything set up is basically direct sunlight. I will say that it was slow, but it was a different type of slow. Basically, as I was explaining this market to someone and how it went, the previous market that I did, the exact same one just in June, there was more traffic, but the big difference was there might have been more people, but there were more people that were actually like going into the tent and grabbing items, looking at items, but not actually purchasing items. I feel like this market, I had maybe a smaller amount of people that were walking by or going through my tent, but more of those people converted to sales. The really fun thing about markets is like you can have really, really busy markets, like in terms of traffic, like a lot of people show up, but they might not be necessarily buying customers. So, you know, you could have a ton of people, but it might really not make a difference or help you out versus if you end up having like maybe a smaller crowd or something that's more interested in what you design and bring and sell, then you can literally make the same amount of money that you would maybe make with like a massive crowd. It just really comes down to to the people that are buying. So traffic is sometimes, you can't always go off of it for these markets. I found, I got there a little bit earlier this time. I had help at the barn, which is great. I'm very appreciative of my help because I really make it so I can survive with these markets. And so I had help and everything. I got there a little bit early. I think by the time I was completely set up was like about 11, which never seems early enough because there are people who are walking around just like the actual shops or the restaurants there. So you do tend to start getting people coming in. I believe I had been basically covered my table fee, which for this market is 125. I basically had covered my fee before the market had even started. So I wanna say I had my table covered by like 11.30. And since I'm local to this market, I really didn't pay anything on gas. I already had gas in my car. And then I did end up picking up sandwiches for myself and for my mother who came and helped me. And then as well as drinks. So I think maybe you wanna say like I had the table and then the food expenses, but I got them for public. So it was considerably cheaper than buying from a restaurant there or also potentially like going to whole foods like I did last time. I want to say like last time the meals per person at Whole Foods was like $20. This time we just got whole subs at Publix and it was like $9.99 each. So can't really compare them. And I think honestly the Publix subs were like a hundred times better than the food at Whole Foods. The funniest thing is when I go through this list, you're going to see that actually my numbers from this market and the previous market I did were pretty identical. Like there's not that big of a difference between the end price, which I found very interesting. I also want to preface this by saying it was 
slow. I felt so bad. There were empty spots. I don't know if people maybe dropped out with the heat. I'm uncertain, but it was very slow. And I am very thankful that I even reached the number that I reached because of the fact that I don't know how everyone else did. I would kind of take a peek around and it seemed like it was really slow for like a lot of people. The person running the market did give the option of if you wanted to leave early and leave at like five opposed to six you could and there was like a solid group of people that were like right all next to each other that left like right when it turned to be five i would say probably like seven or eight people left so it was definitely a very slow day i got that from the other vendors so i'm very thankful that i even made what i made because i think that it was a rough day and i can see why you had heat there was a lot of people, but a lot of people were doing back to school shopping. And I feel like if you're gonna vend and you're gonna do markets, you just have to keep in mind that in my opinion, which granted this will be my first full year coming up in November doing markets, like actual markets, not necessarily farmer's markets. The worst selling months for me have been January, February, cause you are coming right off of Christmas. And then June, July are typically not great months. If you live in a really hot place and you can't find an indoor market, Market, maybe you should like think about it or if there's nighttime markets that is a great thing to do instead but June July where I live being in the south I mean it gets really hot I understand not everyone wants to be outside when it's 97 degrees don't get me wrong sometimes I don't even want to be outside it's just something that I'm definitely picking up on so I think next year I take January or February off anyway because I typically will start back on my first market in April or this past year I did a March market I'm not doing that again unless it's a really good market but I'm probably just gonna start like April May and then see I am leaning towards taking June July off unless it's like a night market or a good market that maybe doesn't have the same hours but it's definitely something i'm considering like i need to sit down and figure that all out but without further ado i did a very good job at number tracking this time and writing down the items that sold so i can pretty much say with more confidence than normal that i do pretty much know what i sold which is <laughs> rare for me i do have it and i do have a pretty good idea so without further ado let's start i sold a cat and a turtle first and this was before the market so this was like pretty soon when i got there because i actually didn't have things out of the boxes yet i was starting this set up and there were these two kids super nice and they asked if they could look through things and i said yes go ahead i have no problem if i'm setting up or taking down with people maybe looking through boxes and picking things out if they're interested in things if they ask i have an issue when people just come up and just start going through things so these people were very nice Nice. they asked and I was like go ahead so they got a cat and turtle I sell the cats for 25 I sell the turtles for 20 so it was 45 my next big order was I sold a possum I sold two capybaras I sold a cat and then I sold one of the I would say medium-sized stingrays that I have all together that was 93 so I sell my possums for $12 my capybaras for 18 cats for 25 and then I think the medium-sized stingrays I sell for 20 I had tried this pattern out and <laughs> actually shockingly like two of them sold today i've had them for a long time i don't think i'm personally going to continue with this pattern moving forward so i have one more left to sell and then i will be completely done with those leftover from that pattern next thing i sold was a hammerhead shark and it was my gray one and i sold it for 30 and it was really really funny because this person i had actually met at the may market that i did in woodstock they were the reason that i had even done the hammerhead sharks in the beginning because they were like well if you ever make a hammerhead shark i'll buy it and they came i don't think they knew i was going to be there i didn't know they were going to be there and they remembered me i remembered them so they finally got their hammerhead shark and i told them i was like you are the reason why i have been crocheting sharks lately so it was a lot of fun it was really cute like it was great so i sold that one for 30. after that i sold one of my little mini elephants and i sold that one for 15. after that i sold an orange and white cat and then i sold one of the new little mini dragons that i'm doing so i'm still undecided on the price that i'm actually going to go for for these mini dragons because size wise they're not huge but it requires a good deal of sewing. Can't remember off the top of my head, but I want to say it has like 12 separate things that you have to sew. So I have the cats at 25. I put the dragon at 25, but I am considering upping it to 30 at my next market just because of, like I said, it 
requires a lot of sewing. Like there's a lot of parts to it. Sewing does take up time when you're sewing 12 things on an item, no matter if it's big or small. After that, I sold my gold unicorn. So it's the one with the pink and purple mane. And then I sold my single blue penguin that I took. That was 55, unicorn was 35, penguin was 20. After that, I sold one of my little chunky bees. And then I sold one of the roosters. The bee was, I believe, 50 and the rooster was 18 so that was 33 after that i sold a single chick for 18 and it was so funny i've not sold chicks in for so long like i just have not been able to move them right i have like 18 still at my house and so i only brought like two i want to say to the market because i hadn't been able to sell them and i tried to not bring a ton of ton of stuff to this market just because it is a walk back and forth and i sold both the chicks and i was like I haven't sold any chicks in like three months. This is crazy. So then after that, I sold one of the medium stingrays, like I said. So I sold it for 20. I ended up selling my duck with a float and I sold that one for 50 because that's my typical thing. I sold my little mini giraffe that I had and then my crocodile, which is a new pattern that I brought for 65. So I had the giraffe at 30 and then I had the crocodile at 35, which was really interesting to see. I was trying to figure out like new things, what seemed to do well at this market, what didn't seem to do well. You kind of have to like figure out what items you're gonna continue to make in stock just from your market results, just because I don't really have a big online store present. My like presence is more in-person markets. So I am planning on making more giraffes and crocodiles if I have time. After that, I sold a single tiger for 15. And I believe this was actually to a Clumpson person, which is why they ended up getting the tiger. And we had a great time talking because both my family members, my parents went to Clumpson too. After that, I sold a single mushroom for 12. These are just the little pop-up ones. After that, I sold two pink roses and I sold them for 24. Each rose is $12. I sold, like I said, the last chick that I brought in a possum for 30 together, chick 18, possum 12. I sold my single triceratops, my mini one that I brought for 15. I had every intention to make more. It just did not happen. I ran out of time. I had customs. And quite frankly, when we get to closer to like markets, that last week, I just give up with market prepping things. Like I'm like, okay, it's really gonna make that big of a difference. I wanna make something that I wanna make. So I tend to focus on like the larger things and just try and get them done for the market. Cause usually like the beginning, I'll do like a lot of small things. And then as it gets close to the market, I'm like, well, no, I wanna make this. That was my only Triceratops. I sold my single lion for 15. I sold a sunflower and a whale. I'm not certain what color whale, but I sold them for 30. And that's because my sunflowers are 18. My whales are 12. I sold another single rose and this was pink and this was 12 and I actually think I mainly sold all pink roses. I only came back with one. I sold both my mermaids. I sold a purple and a pink one for 70. They are 35 each. And this was the first time the mermaids had moved in a while. So I was happy about that. I think I am gonna keep like one of each color just in stock because I do think that like if you have a little girl, they do gravitate towards it, but I have had them for a while. So it's like... After that, I sold a sunflower and this was for 18. I sold a sunflower turtle afterwards for 25. This was the first experience I had with a true grab and run. <laughs> I've had a few close encounters where kids will grab things and then kind of like start going. But this one was like, it happened so fast. <laughs> the little kid came up because there was nobody beside me. So he had come up in my blind spot, but not my mother's blind spot. And he just like reached up and grabbed the turtle and like took off. I gotta say I pray for that turtle because he was abusing it and I think that was one of my like beginning turtles I had made so like last year so it was not maybe the same quality as my current ones so I'm praying for that turtle but the kid ended up taking off of the turtle and the dad saw it and then the dad ran over and gave me his credit card. I was like did I just actually experience that in like five o'clock in the afternoon? It was funny. So after that I sold a black and a white cat for 25. I sold another cat 
cat. I want to say this was either brown and white or gray and white because that seemed to be my most popular kind of cat this weekend. I sold that one for 25. I only brought three pieces of lavender and I sold both of them. So I sold one lavender for eight. Somebody came in, bought the last two lavenders for 16. I sold a bee and a rooster for 33. And then my last order as I was packing up, because I did end up packing up a little bit earlier just because I really wanted to get home and not be so late. So my last order was a black cat and I sold it for 25 and the guy just ended up coming up when I was basically packing up all my plushies and asked about the cats and I showed him and then he picked that one out. So that is basically everything that I sold. A vast majority of my items this weekend were on Square. I think I had maybe two or three on like cash, but pretty much everything was Square. So let me pull up the report. In total, I had 23 sales. The average for the sale was 32. And on Square, I made about $730. And then there was some more with the cash and like other things. Compared to the previous month, last month, this market that I did, this is just a stark, drastic difference in credit card amount. I had 474. So about a $300 difference on the credit card. That market, I had a lot more people paying cash and Venmo. This one was definitely very credit card focused. So all in all, compared Comparing it to the market I had last month, I think I made maybe like $100, $200, maybe a little bit less, but it was not that much less, which was very surprising, like I said, because it felt different with the flow of traffic, but I had more people that were actually purchasing things opposed to just coming in the tent, touching things, and then not actually buying anything. Very happy that I made this number, especially considering all of the many expenses I have right now with my horse. I'm very appreciative of any support I get because, wow, I I think in my vlogs that I have coming out, I'll really go into depth, but it has been quite a tricky situation there. And it's not great news, but I'm trying to stay positive as much as I can, but I'm always appreciative of people who support me because like I said, this just all goes back to paying my horse's stuff off. And I don't think there will be an end in sight at this point with any of the medical expenses. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I was a little bit slow on recording this past week. I don't know. I got in a little bit of a slump. I'm gonna try getting back into it. I just had so many videos that I was editing and I got them out, but then I feel like I burnt myself out by doing like five videos in a row. So I'm gonna get back into it. I'll try and have a crochet with me video coming out soon and then some other fun stuff. But if you guys like this video, feel free to subscribe, feel free to like it. I do do lots of different crochet videos and blogs and just anything and everything so i hope you guys have an amazing rest of the day and i hope to see you in the next video bye